God be gracious to us and bless us. And cause his face to shine upon us. That your way may be known on the earth. Your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you will judge the peoples with uprightness. And guide the nations on the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its produce. God, our God, blesses us. God blesses us. That all the ends of the earth may fear him. are filled with His glory. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, word from home. I'm going to borrow a phrase from my pastor. That was perfect. That was, that was exactly what we needed to come and lift our eyes to, toward heaven and to rejoice and praise the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen? That's what we've come here to do this morning. We're going to take a moment just to welcome those around us in the sanctuary and welcome those around us at home. We are so glad you're here. Stand and wave at those around the, the sanctuary, everybody, and give them your best. God bless you. We're so glad you're worshiping with us today. That's perfect. Thank you. Although there's lots of controversy over here, right? I'm juggling better on. This 
not instead of the sermon. <laughs> Welcome to First Baptist Church. We're grateful for those of you who can be in the room with us this morning, and we're grateful for those of you who are worshiping with us on TV this morning. This Sunday marks our sixth month anniversary of COVID pandemic quarantine. And so we have been at this uh, six months, and we don't really have any kind of six-month celebration uh, scheduled for this morning. Uh, however, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to spare you an extended welcome, so you, you don't have to, to listen to me there. But I do, hey, 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 <laughs> but I do, I do want to say thank you. And I want to take this time six months in to say thank you to our media ministry and our TV team. So let's, let's praise the Lord for them. You know, one of, the things, one of the things that we have noticed in this time is six months ago when we needed to pivot, our media team was ready. And, and we, we have been blessed with a TV ministry. We, we've been live on TV nearly 50 years. And so all of that had been preparing us for this time together, and, and God has blessed us. Um, we, we have an opportunity here that most don't have. And so we want to we thank the Lord for that. Um, and, and we say thank you to the church who has prepared the way for this. And in particular, I, I do want to mention um, our... Uh, minister uh, for media uh, who has served faithfully through all of this is Jeremy Harper. And so, Jeremy, we love you, um, and we just, let's, let's say thank you to Jeremy Harper for that. Um, the, you know, he, he has prepared and led us um, to, to worship online um, just as well as he possibly could have. So we, we thank the Lord for Jeremy Harper. And, and one other group I want to mention. So we do have some people on staff that help with this, but we also have a, an army of volunteers that help run our TV ministry and that God has blessed us with people with technical knowledge and technical skill. And in fact, they have helped raise up technically uh, um, just profound um, cameramen and, and um, people who run the, the boards for us and back in the TV room. And just want to say thank you to them because we have about 60 volunteers who help the TV ministry run week in and week out. And so we praise the Lord for you and we thank the Lord for all of you who have served in that way. So can, can we give one more just round of applause for those volunteers? And so we, we celebrate six months of quarantine um, by thanking the Lord. Thanking the Lord for you and thanking the Lord for them. And thank the Lord for, for them who have served in making this possible. And also thank you. Our, our TV ministry does run on offerings um, specifically set aside for that. And many of you who have watched on TV have given in that way and have made that possible for some 50 years. And so just want to thank you for those gifts and the way you participate in that way. And thank all of you who have served so faithfully to make sure that we can have live worship across South Texas, and we are so thankful that God has been good in this way. So let, let's pray, and then we'll continue in worship. Lord, it is so good to be together in all of the ways that we are together these days. Lord, you have woken us up this day and have given us new breath And there's nothing more meaningful for us to do with this new breath than we have, that we have been given uh, than to worship you, to praise your holy name. And so even in quarantine, we shout the name and gospel of Jesus Christ from the rooftops because we love you, Lord. We have seen your good works. And so, Lord, we pray this morning that this time of worship would be an extension of that, holy and good, and absolutely for you. It's in the name of our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. 
Amen. If you didn't have a bulletin, Gary's got one right there. He'll put on his mask and he'll deliver that to you. So here we go. So friends, we get a privilege now of, of turning to the Word of God. What a privilege this is every week. Um, and as many of you know, we start a new uh, Bible series, uh, study series this Sunday where we're marching through the book of Philippians. And I just ask that, that you make this a priority in your life, um, to be in the Word every day. And if you've had the privilege of reading this, this passage from Philippians 1, one over and over this week. I hope you've also considered the people that God has put in your life to co-labor, to be a part of the gospel ministry with you, that, that have shaped your faith, that, that have allowed you to help shape theirs, and what a joy this is. And so I, I just want to commend you again, our responsibility to be in the Word day in and day out. So as we, as we can focus our, our hearts now towards the, the sermon this morning, let's, let's look at Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, this very familiar, beautiful passage starts like this. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Let's continue our worship through singing now. If you'll take your hymnals or your, or your bulletin and turn to 644, count your blessings. Let's stand together. Let's worship.
may be seated. Amen. Good morning, children. We're so grateful that you can be with us. I'm in the room, uh, but many of you are on TV this morning. We're going to continue with this quarantine tradition that we've been doing. That I want you to see if you can draw some pictures today that are part of the sermon. And you know, as we've done in the past, if you want to post those online and you can use the hashtag FBCSA Home Worship, uh, we see those and others see them and they're greatly encouraged by them. And so today, I, I want you to listen carefully in the sermon. There's two stories, and I want you to, to see if maybe you can draw both. Maybe draw one, maybe draw the other. But both of these stories are about the great Christian missionary named Paul. And both of these stories are, when, um, are times that Paul was in jail. In fact, there were a number of times uh, back then when he would tell people about Jesus Christ and they would get upset and actually have him thrown in jail um, because he spoke about Jesus. And so we're going to look at, at two different times he was in jail. But both of those times, he knew Jesus and, and he said that Jesus just brought a joy with him. That even in, in jail, his face lit up with joy and he and his friends started to sing hymns and it became this great moment together, that even though they were in jail that day, they were able to sing, and they were able to worship, and they were able to be happy because they knew Jesus. And so I want you to listen in the sermon for some of the details on, on both of these times they're in jail, and maybe draw a picture of Paul, or there's another guy with him named Silas, um, and maybe draw them in jail, but see if you can draw them very happy and looking up to God. Okay, so see, see how you can do that. If you want, there's a couple of scriptures that maybe help with that. You can see them in Acts 16 uh, or the end of Acts. We're going to get to some of those in the sermon. And so I want you to listen very carefully for those stories in the sermon and then see if you can draw a picture. Or if you're at home, Pastor Aaron loves to see if you do it with Play-Doh or other kinds of things. We would love to see how creative you can be with those. And then put those, you want to put those online, FBCSA Home Worship. All right, let's pray together. We'll go. Lord, we thank you for this time, and we thank you for the children of our church. And Lord, we pray that you would instill in them a joy and a life that could only come in the power of your Holy Spirit. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Part of the scripture we've been reading out of Philippians this week is this uh, Philippians 1 9 and this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more. If you look at the words to uh, hymn 473 more love to thee O Christ I want you to think about this when you love others better you're loving Jesus better. When we follow his, his, his command that we love each other, that we serve each other, we're really, we're really answering the call that Jesus, uh, to Jesus, for Jesus. So what a privilege this is as we prepare to, to worship through the word this morning. Let's sing this. More love to thee, O Christ. Stand together.
choir and orchestra, we miss you. And we long for the day when you're back with us in the room. If you would, uh, turn with me to Philippians 1, uh, verses 7 through 11. It is in your bulletin. We're going to read that aloud together. Um, so if you're at home, you want to gather that. And those of us in the room, let's stand. And we're going to read this aloud together. This then is the text for today. For it is only right for me to feel this way about you all, because I have you in my heart, since both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers of grace with me. For God is my witness how I long for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus, for this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve the things that are excellent, in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ, having been filled with the fruit of righteousness, which comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. May God bless the reading of his word. Philippians is a tale of two imprisonments, one in Philippi and one in Rome. The first may have been the worst. Paul and Silas were in Philippi, and the Holy Spirit was working. They were proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ over that city, and lives were changed. A couple of critical lives were changed. There was one, a merchant woman, who became a deep believer in Jesus Christ. And, and there was another, a slave girl. And things began to get out of control. An angry mob started to form as Paul and Silas proclaimed the name of Jesus Christ. And, and now, it, it wasn't just that they were saying his name, but now as, as Paul and Silas were proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ over the city, it was starting to affect the local economy. In fact, if you'll look with me at Acts 16, 19, it'll be on the screen, but you can look it up as well. So this, this is what is happening in this moment as, as Paul and Silas are preaching the gospel. And then we come to this moment where a slave girl is saved. In verse 19, but her masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, and they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. At which point, Paul and Silas are beaten severely and taken into the maximum security cell of the Philippian prison. They walk through multiple jail doors, and they were tucked behind thick stone walls. There was nothing to see other than prison bars and heavy chains. But on this day, chains would have been the easy way out for Paul and Silas. At this point, the jailer placed them in stocks instead. Now the stocks are this large wooden restraint that fit around your legs. And so what the jailer would do and, and what he did to Paul is he would take their legs and spread them out as far as he could and place them in these wooden stocks to an uncomfortable position to lock you in place. You couldn't move. You couldn't sleep. In fact, prisoners would cry out in agony because they couldn't adjust their legs to stop the cramps. A prisoner's mind couldn't get past it. That was when Paul first met these people who formed the church in Philippi. He got there, he was with them, they were building the church, and then he got to see the inside of the maximum security cell. And then we fast forward about eight years. So some eight years in the future, Paul is then writing that same church a letter, remembering those experiences. And as he writes this new letter to them, which is what we're reading in our text for today, Paul again is in prison. 
But this time, he's in very different circumstances. This time, he's facing the death penalty in Rome simply because 40 Jewish leaders wanted him dead because he wouldn't stop saying that Jesus Christ is alive. Everywhere he went, Paul said, Jesus Christ is the author and perfecter of our faith. Jesus Christ is the one who saves. He was the one who was raised from the dead and is alive and well today in the church and in heaven. And the mob wouldn't have it. In fact, there that day in Jerusalem, they chained Paul up and they literally put him on a ship in chains and shipped him off to Rome so that he could face the death penalty there. Now, in Rome, Paul didn't have to contend with prison bars, but the heavy chains were constant. There, he was kept under house arrest for two years. But in this house arrest, when he couldn't leave, there was uh, shackles around his wrist and chains that went to another shackle that was shackled around a prison guard. And in fact, he would always have a prison guard chained to him. Every four hours, they would rotate guards in and out. And that's how he was stuck for two years. Prison bars and heavy chains are an awful circumstance. One that most people could never get past. One that most people still can't get past. When we are in those kinds of situations, all that we can see are the stone walls and the wooden stocks that are clamped around our ankles. These physical restraints terrorize our imagination. In fact, they, they terrorize our imaginations as much as they limit movement. Any energy that could have been spent towards reimagining this reality for good is instead wasted, sulking. You know, it's, it's not a far leap then to a pandemic. Though our suffering is nowhere near what Paul endured in jail, nevertheless, we sulk. Refusing any hope that flickers in the distance so that we might grumble over inconveniences. We, we stare at the restrictions like they are prison bars and heavy chains only loosened at a virus's discretion. It's like we're sitting on the floor of a jail cell, scraping the concrete with a spoon. But, but we're not digging an escape hatch. We only scrape the floor so that we can complain about the spoon not working. Paul, though, was different. Sitting on the floor of his jail cell, his eyes lit up with an unexplainable joy, a spiritual joy from God himself. You know, every other prisoner who dared lift his eyes off the chains only saw prison bars but not Paul. He looked through the prison bars and saw heaven. His heart was filled with joy and he started to sing. See, that's what happened when, when Paul and Silas were imprisoned in Philippi. You go back to that, that first moment that we spoke about earlier with the, with the wooden stocks locked around his legs. He couldn't sleep and so at midnight they started to sing. And, you know, our, our first reaction to that is, well, that's, that's nice. I'm, I'm glad they had an opportunity to sing that day. I hope they found some comfort in an old hymn. Maybe like a lullaby, it helped them find some sleep. But that's not right. That's not what they were doing. They, they weren't singing lullabies behind prison bars. That they were worshiping. And, and worship itself, when we worship, it reverberates deep into the earth and high into the heavens. You see, worship is a cosmic act that, that has all kinds of unanticipated ripples. And for Paul and Silas that night in Philippi, worship literally prompted an earthquake. And it opened their cell doors in fact, unlocked every lock in that place. And in the early morning, their jailer came to believe in Jesus Christ as his Savior. 
See, God still does that kind of thing. God is still doing those kinds of things in his church through the Holy Spirit during a pandemic. You see, though this world is locked down, God is still expanding his kingdom daily. And I hope we don't miss out on it. I hope we don't miss out on the the work that the Spirit of God is doing. If only we would see past the prison bars and heavy chains into heaven itself. You see, for for Paul, living in the Holy Spirit and, and finding this joy in a relationship with God, the prison bars and heavy chains were joyful. His pain and his confinement led to one of the greatest stories of witnessing in the early church. If he wasn't in chains in a maximum security cell that day, that jailer wouldn't have come to the gospel. You see, in in the spirit, Paul started to see how God could use the most dire circumstances to do incredible work for the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit changed Paul's eyes so that he didn't see prison bars and heavy chains. He saw an opportunity for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, when he's in Rome several years later, Paul is filled with joy. Even though he's imprisoned and under house of rest, his life is just full of this this spirit of God that's bringing new rejoicing into his life every day. His imagination wasn't spent on how terrible life was, even though he was probably in prison for the seventh time in 10 years. Instead, his imagination started to wonder, what amazing things is God going to do today? What what amazing things can God do in this circumstances, in this circumstance? He started started to imagine how God might show up that day. You see, in Rome, he was there, not in a jail cell, but shackled, chained to an officer. Paul looked at his chains, and he looked at that officer, and he smiled. He was filled with joy because every single one of those officers heard about Jesus Christ. You know, amazingly, this, this is how the book of Acts ends. If you'll look at me with me to Acts 28, it'll, it'll be on the screen as well. Acts 28. So the, these are the last two verses in the book of Acts. The acts of the church. As the Holy Spirit begins to fill the church, these are the things that happened. And so we get to this moment at the end of the book of Acts where Paul is under house arrest. Paul is in chains. And so we get to verse 30. And he stayed there two full years in his own rented quarters. And he was welcoming all who came to him. So when he's under house arrest, people can come and go and see him. He's just kind of chained up there. And so people did. They came and to see him, and he was welcoming everybody. And he was preaching the kingdom of God and teaching concerning the Lord Jesus Christ with all openness, unhindered. That's, that's the last word of the book of, of Acts. That's, that's the work of the Holy Spirit in the church, that it doesn't matter the circumstances that we find ourselves in, whether we're, we're chained up in Philippi or we're chained up in Rome or we're facing a pandemic in San Antonio. The gospel of Jesus Christ is unhindered by all of it. The, the Spirit is moving unhindered through all of the things that we face. And every door that is in front of us, every chain that has bound us, the Spirit is moving freely through all of it unhindered for the sake of the kingdom of God, for the sake of the glory of the Lord. And what we need to remember this morning is is that Paul was not some superhuman. In fact, we don't need to even think of him as as some kind of a hero. He He was just like us, people with a heartbeat but a person with the Holy Spirit. One who is living in the hope and life that the the Spirit of God can bring and only the Spirit of God can bring. You see, for Paul to, to look past the prison bars and heavy chains into heaven 
was a work of the Holy Spirit. He, he, did, he didn't have some unique intestinal fortitude that, that helped him gather up the strength so that he could push through to the other side. The secret was the Spirit of God. He knew the Spirit of God. E even in that jail cell, even under house arrest, he was able to experience the person of Jesus Christ. And, and this same work is, is happening in the church today. It's happening in our city this very moment where we are experiencing the Spirit. We are experiencing the Christ through all of it. And, and that, that experience of God himself is what brings us joy and hope and life. And see, apart from that, you're not going to know any kind of joy. Uh, apart from that, all of these things that are pouring onto us from the world just drain the life out of us. In fact, it's so much so that it just is killing us every day. And for us to find any hope through all of it and wading through the, the pain that all of the people are facing and all of us are facing and, and all of it just sort of coming in and as wave over wave with Jesus Christ, we can know joy. And in fact, we can press, press forward through all of it with a hope that only comes from heaven. You see, in the Holy Spirit, you can look past the metaphorical prison bars and heavy chains of this pandemic, and you can see heaven. You can, you can experience it. You can experience it together, together with, with the Spirit, to, together as a church. We experience it every day. And you, this very morning, can live in the kingdom of God. It is coming and it is not yet. But we can walk with Christ in his kingdom. We can serve him as our Lord and we will know a joy that is inexpressible. You see, what, what begins to happen is, is as we know the spirit of God and, and as we experience Jesus Christ we begin to walk with him. And when you walk with Jesus Christ, the prison bars and heavy chains just don't matter. Because when you walk with Jesus, you can walk through doors and you can walk on water. And I want to invite you into that kind of relationship this morning. That if, if you haven't ever known that, come to the feet of Jesus Christ and know it today. Or in the same way, if it has been a long time since you have ever experienced that or ever known that, if it's a distant memory, come back this morning as a prodigal. Come back and kneel at the feet of Jesus Christ and, and be saved and be refreshed again. Because that, that can happen this day in spite of everything that's happening around us, in spite, in spite of everything that's in the news. In fact, we can leave all of that outside the walls of the church outside of worship and know that God is going to bring us through all of it with a joy that can only come from heaven. And so draw in near to the Lord this morning. Let him turn the morning into song. And, and trust that the Holy Spirit is working through this. The Holy Spirit is working through the word of God this morning on your heart, on our heart, on the heart of this city to make it right. So let's, let's trust that and surrender our lives to Jesus Christ so that we might be saved. And let us surrender our, our hearts and let us surrender our eyes and let us surrender our minds to Jesus Christ so that we can see through the prison bars and heavy chains into heaven this morning. You see, if, if you're ready for that, if you're, if you're ready to do that this morning, if, if God's Spirit's been working on your heart so that that might be true today, we, we want to walk through that with you because we know it's important and it's good. And so we want to be there with you and we, we want to hear from you. And so uh, on TV, there's a couple of ways that you can do that and we want, want you to be faithful. This, this is a faithful response to God. And so see it not as you're res responding to me or this church, 
But this is a response to God, that you're going to submit your life to Jesus Christ. And so if you're ready to do that, you can, you can call. The, the number has been on the screen where you can call our church, and, and we have uh, people ready to receive those calls. Or you can go to our website, fbcsa.org slash connect. And you'll, you'll find ways there that you can connect with us. And so um, we want to do this with you, even though we have to be uh, distant. Now, in the same way, in, in the room, we're going to have a, a time to respond to Jesus Christ. And in the room, this is the way we respond to the Christ. We, we're, um, the, the altar is open, and you can come forward, and you can kneel and pray here. You can just find uh, kind of where you are and, and find a comfortable place to pray there, and you can, you can pray there if you need to pray, if you need to, to journal. You can, you can write in your journals or in your sermon notes and, and write out how, how you need to respond to God. Also, Brian and I will be up here in the front, and we'll, we'll receive you. Um, if, if you're ready to accept Christ or if this is the time you need to come down and, and, and be a part of this church in that way, we're here to receive you, and, and we'll try to do that as safely as possible. And so all of us in here, we need to respond to God in some way this morning. Uh, Word from Home is, is going to be playing for us, and, and as you, you listen, um, listen to them, but as you listen to them, listen for a word from God. Now, uh, remember here, th- this, is, this is not a, a time for us to uh, just sort of mark time. It's not a, a time for us to, to plan out lunch. This is our time to, to faithfully, obediently respond to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we, we want to invite you to do that. And so however you feel compelled, um, let us respond to the Lord.
Amen. Um, well done, Word from Home. We're, we're grateful. If you're new to First Baptist, we've had many new uh, on TV uh, as well. Word from Home uh, typically leads our early service where we, uh, during a normal season, we have an 8.30 a.m. service and they lead in worship at our 8.30 a.m. service and do an amazing job. Um, and then 11, normally we are led uh, by our choir and orchestra. And so we, we do long for the day that, that that's all back and running uh, the way it should be. So with that said, let's, let's turn to our, our life together today. There's a couple of things that you need to note. Um, one of those is on Tuesday, and make special note of this, Tuesday, September 15th. So Tuesday, September 15th, we are going to have another day of fasting and prayer. Now before we were doing those on Wednesdays, but we've moved it back to Tuesday because uh, many of our Wednesday night activities are now happening on Zoom and are beginning on, on virtual meetings. And so to protect those times and protect that, um, th those virtual meetings, we've moved our day of prayer and fasting uh, to a Tuesday. So Tuesday, September 15th, we want you to, to pray with us and fast with us all day long. There'll be prayer prompts that, that we'll send out and then we'll fast together from uh, sunup until sundown, and then we'll end the evening with a drive-in prayer service uh, led by our ministers. Um, the ones we have had so far have been incredible and have been life-giving. Um, please don't miss that opportunity with us. We, we want to be there um, with you in, in doing that. And let me make a, a couple of notes here, too, for our fall calendar. Uh, Christianity Explored, it's, it's a perfect intro to Christian, uh, Christianity class. It begins uh, September 13th, virtually. Um, this is a great refresher course. It's a great intro course um, on who Jesus Christ is. And so we'd love for you to do that with us uh, September 13th. Also, please note our single adult ministry is, is getting back September 16th uh, for their midweek in the city virtually. And those are always just a great time together, a lot of fun. So please be aware of midweek in the city. And then uh, one more life together moment. Um, we have a, a group called Heart to Heart, and these are um, groups, they're support groups that we do here uh, on Tuesdays, and, and those are beginning up, and if you need some encouragement, um, those are considering forgiveness, journey to restoration, divorce care, men's freedom group. Um, these are great support groups, um, and, and if you would like to be involved in those or need some of those, you can get connected to our Heart to Heart ministry, um, and they can minister in very specific and holy ways that will help you heal. And so we're, we're grateful for those opportunities and, and grateful to be together. So continue to pray for us. You know, as we, we look forward to, to what God is doing in the city and in the life of our church, um, we're, we're thankful and, and thankful for the Lord. Amen. So our hymn of dismissal for our study in Philippians will be uh, Blessed Be the Name. It's one that you know very well, so I just, just ask that you just sing it out with all kinds of joy since that's what we're studying. So as we sing this, we'll, we will stand together and sing, and then we'll be, we'll be seated as Seth plays the, the postlude, and then Scott will come and dismiss us. Let's stand together and sing. Thank you. 